In the back alleys of Mexico City, a young boy fought for survival. This boy, with no real name known to anyone, was a fixture in the underground street fighting scene, a child with no past and no future. His piercing eyes spoke volumes of the hardships he'd endured. His brawls were brutal, a dance of rage and despair, each punch thrown with the ferocity of a caged animal. Yet in his heart, the boy was more lost than fierce. Abandoned at a young age, the streets became his home. He grew up with no guidance, no love, only the harsh lessons taught by hunger and isolation. Every fight was a desperate grasp for control in a world that had none to offer. As he fought, his mind raced with feelings of anger and desperation, a release of the pain he carried inside, a silent cry for help that no one could hear. He wondered if there would ever be more to his life than this endless cycle of violence. But fate intervened one fateful night, when after a particularly vicious fight, he was left wounded and barely conscious. Stumbling through the dark streets, he found himself at the steps of a monastery. It was there that the Marquez priest discovered him, a broken body bearing the scars of a life no child should endure. Little did he know that this moment would mark the beginning of a new chapter in his life. Within the monastery's peaceful walls, the boy found something he had never known, kindness. The Marquez priests, led by Father Antonio, nursed him back to health in both body and spirit. Father Antonio, a man of immense compassion and wisdom, saw beyond the boy's hardened exterior. He saw a soul crying out for salvation. From the ashes of his past, a new fighter was rising and so began the journey of the one they would come to call. Believing he wasn't worth saving, the boy hesitantly asked the priest why he would even bother helping him. ¿Por qué te ayudé? Porque, jovencito, todo el mundo merece la oportunidad de reescribir su historia. Por muy oscuras que sean las páginas, siempre hay lugar para la luz looking down at his bruised knuckles. Fists and fighting was all he knew. Considering the priest's words for a moment, he asked if someone like him could even find redemption. No se encuentra la redención. Se construye día a día, elección tras elección. Y veo en ti un corazón listo para el cambio. He felt a wave of emotion wash over him as he listened to Father Antonio's words. A part of him wanted to believe that redemption was possible, but the weight of his past seemed too heavy to bear. He silently vowed to himself that he would do whatever it took to become the person the priest saw in him. Under their care, he underwent a profound transformation. He hung up his fists, renouncing the violence that had defined his existence. Instead, he embraced the teachings of the church finding solace in faith and purpose in service. The monastery became his new home, a place where he could heal and grow. Now older, he could never fully turn away from his past. He saw his pain reflected in the eyes of the street children where he once existed. He vowed to save them from the path he had walked, temporarily bringing them to the monastery. His dream of building an orphanage for these lost souls became his driving force. He wanted to offer them hope, a chance at a life he never had. Determined to make his dream a reality, the young man knew he had to find a way to fund the orphanage. It was then that he decided to return to the ring, not as a street brawler, but as a masked luchador wrestler. Adopting a jaguar mask that would go on to become the iconic symbol of his new identity, he took on the name King. As he stepped into the ring, he left behind the desperate street fighter and became the beast priest, a warrior with a cause. With this new purpose fueling him, King threw himself into training, refining his skills and evolving his fighting style, a path that would lead him to unexpected rivalries and friendships. 
King's journey in the wrestling world was off to a good start as he began to gain notoriety, but he would soon come to face an opponent who matched his same intensity. His early career saw a fateful encounter with Armor King, a fellow masked wrestler. Their rivalry was intense, marked by a match that would change both their lives. In the heat of the moment, King accidentally caused a severe injury to Armor King, damaging his eye. This incident would haunt King, becoming the beginning of a rivalry he never wanted. Armor King, a renowned luchador known for his fierce fighting spirit and his quest for worthy opponents, had built a reputation as a formidable dojo crasher. When he first encountered King, he was intrigued by the similarity of their titles and the skill King possessed. Their initial battle was fierce, and though Armor King lost, it only fueled his determination to prove himself against this worthy adversary. As King's reputation grew in the wrestling world, whispers of a legendary tournament reached his ears. The King of Iron Fist Tournament, a gathering of the world's most formidable fighters. With a generous prize purse awaiting the winner, King knew this could be the opportunity he had been seeking to secure the future of his orphanage. With a resolute heart, King entered the tournament as a wrestler, as a guardian fighting for a cause greater than himself. The stage was set for battles that would test his mettle and determination like never before. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament. As the King of Iron Fist Tournament progressed, King found himself face to face with a familiar adversary, Armor King. The air was thick with tension as they faced off. The scars of their previous encounter were still fresh. Armor King entered the arena with a mix of resentment and determination, while King, aware of the weight of their history, approached the match with a blend of regret and resolve. Despite the bitterness of his previous defeat, Armor King couldn't help but admire King's skill. He could sense he fought for a noble cause. As they began to clash, King knew that their rivalry had been born from his mistake, and he desperately wanted to make things right, silently hoping that this fight could be a turning point in their feud. King versus Armor King. The match was a spectacle of raw power and technical prowess, each move charged with their shared history. In the end, King emerged victorious. But this victory was different. It wasn't about defeating a rival. It was about transcending past animosities. In the wake of their battle, a new bond began to form. revelation of King's true purpose for entering the tournament, to raise funds for his orphanage, struck a chord with Armor King. He saw in King a kindred spirit, someone who fought for a cause greater than himself. In the weeks that followed, the two began training together for King's next fights in the tournament, their rivalry transforming into friendship. They pushed each other to new heights, and their mutual respect grew with each session. Armor King opened up to King, sharing stories of his own journey as a luchador and the close bond he shared with his brother. 
Through their interactions, both fighters discovered that they had more in common than they initially thought. As the tournament resumed, King turned his focus to the next challenge. Enter Jack, a towering figure of metal and might, a hulking android designed for one purpose, to be a ruthless killing machine. This battle was not just physical but symbolic, pitting the heart and soul of a man against the cold, unfeeling strength of a machine. <laughs> King versus Jack. You win. Agile and skilled. King maneuvered around Jack's brute force, a dance of contrasting styles. The clash pitted determination and human spirit against mechanical might. It was King who triumphed. The quarterfinals brought King face to face with Kazuya Mishima, a name that echoed with power and menace throughout the tournament. Kazuya was a very tough opponent. He was a force of nature. King, undeterred, stepped into battle, fueled by the dreams of the children waiting for him back home. King versus Kazuya Mishima. The battle was fierce. Kazuya's emotionless passion clashed with King's luchador techniques. Despite his valiant effort, King was defeated. However, his journey was not in vain. His performance in the tournament, reaching the quarterfinals, ensured him enough prize money to comfortably secure the funding for his orphanage. Though his journey in the King of Iron Fist tournament had come to an end, King left the arena with his head held high. As he reflected on his experiences, he realized that his true purpose had always been about more than just winning. It was about fighting for something bigger than himself. His thoughts turned to the children at the monastery. They were his true victory, and the legacy he would leave behind would be measured not in trophies or titles, but in the lives he touched and the hope he kindled. With a renewed sense of purpose, King set his sights on the future, ready to embrace the next chapter in his life. King returned to the monastery. Although defeated, he still triumphed. He had achieved what he set out to do, secure a future for the orphanage. The priests welcomed him with open arms, proud of the man who had turned his life around for the sake of others. With the prize money, King did more than just fund the orphanage. He expanded it, opening its doors to more children. He adopted several kids off the streets, providing them with shelter and a family. The monastery became a sanctuary of hope, a place where the echoes of laughter replaced the silence of despair. Among the new faces was a young boy, barely seven, with a spark in his eyes and an unyielding spirit. This boy would hold a special place in King's heart. Even at his tender age, he was already a big fan of King's wrestling matches, watching them with wide-eyed wonder. King saw a reflection of his younger self in the boy, the same resilience, the same untamed spirit. He would often be seen at King's side, 
mimicking his moves and wearing a small, makeshift jaguar mask. King found joy in this young admirer, unknowingly setting the child up on a path where he would one day take up his mantle and continue his legacy. He looked at the smiling faces around him. This, he realized, was what he had been fighting for all along, a chance to give these children the love and support he never had. Silently, he made a promise to himself. He would do everything in his power to be the role model they needed, to show them that no matter how dark their pasts, there was always hope for a brighter future. His journey was far from over. To continue funding the orphanage, he would have to keep pursuing his wrestling career, something he was more than happy to do. But for now, he relished this moment of peace, a rare luxury in a fighter's life. The orphanage was his legacy, a testament to a fighter who turned his pain into purpose. As King looked to the future, he knew his path was intertwined with the children he saved. Together, they would face whatever came next with the heart of a luchador and the spirit of a warrior.